Oh, so else. then they grill like also, okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, that is right off the fire. Good morning, everyone. It's Mark Wiens with Migrationology.com in Istanbul, Turkey. Woke up very early this morning and it is a bright, sunshiny day. The sun is reflecting over the Bosphorus. Today we are gonna do some sightseeing and some eating. It's about 7 a.m. now. We are walking towards the tram station and we're gonna take the tram to Sultanahmet. Yeah. Yeah. Three pass ticket sales menu. Please take your card from return tray below. We made it to Kabatas tramway station and figured out how to buy our tickets. It was pretty easy and we are gonna load onto the tramway now. Or this one is already closed? This one's already closed? Oh, Vanaya. Oh, you pressed the button. Okay, we made it onto the tramway. We just got off the train at Sultanahmet that took about 20 minutes and this is the area, this is a neighborhood within the Fati district of Istanbul and it's one of the most famous, uh, most important areas of Istanbul and some of the most well-known attractions are located in this area. And our first stop this morning, we are going to what is called Sultan Ahmed Chami, which is uh, known in English often as the Blue Mosque. Wow, it is just amazing already. I can see the Blue Mosque to the right and Hagia Sophia to the left. The view from the outside is spectacular. And this is one of those places that I have seen so many photos of that it almost, feel, it almost feels like I've been here before because I've seen so many photos of it. But at the same time, when you're here, it's, it's completely different. The magnitude of it and of course the inside is going to be also completely different than the photos. Oh, and stepping into the, the main courtyard area. I think we came at the perfect time though. It's almost completely quiet and just beautiful. We arrived a little bit early. It's still not open to the public yet. We have about 30 minutes, but I'm just enjoying this courtyard. It is absolutely spectacular. I think we're gonna take a look at the Hippodrome first, and then we will come back in about 30 minutes to go inside. Hello. How are you? You are the, the Hippodrome dog. Right outside of the Blue Mosque is the Hippodrome of Constantinople. And this is an open square area. Hippodrome means the horse path. And so this area is also often called the horse square. The obelisk is made from pink granite and with some Egyptian carvings on the sides of it. And it looks almost new. It's so like perfectly well kept. And then on the base of the obelisk, you will see some different carvings. Uh, you can see Theodius the Great, as well as some of his family, which are carved into the base. One of the most iconic sites in all of Istanbul is the Sultan Ahmed Jami, which is also commonly known as the Blue Mosque because of the blue tiles that are inside. It was built by Sultan Ahmed in the years between 1609 and 1616, and there are Byzantine and Christian influences in the architecture, but it is an Ottoman-style mosque. And there are five main domes, six minarets, and then eight smaller domes which support the main, the entire structure. It is just a spectacular sight. It's 8.30 a.m., they have just opened, so we are entering right now. And you walk inside and it just opens up into this huge prayer hall area. And 
Within the on the on the ceiling within the domes, there are over 20,000 handmade ceramic tiles. Some of them have uh, kind of floral and cypress designs, and then it contrasts the red carpet which is on the floor. But this is just an amazing sight, just giant columns. And what I really like is you can see all of the domes as well on the inside. There are also dozens of ancient chandeliers, and there are over 200 stained glass windows. And now we are heading across the courtyard to the Hagia Sophia. And it started off as a Christian basilica, and then it became a Roman Catholic cathedral, and then it became a mosque, and now present day it is a museum. But there is just layer upon layer of history. They didn't allow me to bring my microphone inside, but they said video is okay, so the audio might not be so good, but we are entering into Hagia Sophia now. It is absolutely gigantic, and the main dome, which is right above me right now, it's so high. They are doing some construction in here right now, so there is scaffolding on one side, but that doesn't take away from the magnitude of this place, and you can just feel the ancient history in here. There's even a noticeable aroma in here that smells kind of like stone and kind of like must. It just smells ancient in here. Along with the dome and the entire Hagia Sophia, one of the things that I've noticed is the floor, which includes just giant pieces of marble. Just imagine how many thousands and thousands of people have passed through this same door and walked across this same stone and you can see it starting to slump. We are now heading up to the upper gallery. Cool, and entering this feels like we're underground here. It just keeps on going and going, wrapping around and up. I'm gonna go look out this window and I think you can get a nice view of the Blue Mosque from here. Oh yeah. Hagia <laughs> Sophia is a place that I have dreamed about visiting ever since high school when I took a course on Western civilization. So it is, I'm extremely glad to have had the chance to visit. It was amazing. When you come to Istanbul, you do not wanna miss seeing both the Blue Mosque and Hagia Sophia. We are now walking over to the Topkapi Palace. Yep. And I think I forgot to mention this earlier, but I bought a museum pass Istanbul and it costs 85 lira and it is valid for many of the museums and it's valid for five days. So even we entered into Hagia Sophia and now we're gonna enter into the palace. Each of those entrances on their own are 40 lira, so with the card, that's just an extra little bit and it also allows access to many more museums. So if you're planning to visit many of the museums in Istanbul, it's a great way to save some money and also it allows you to bypass the lines for tickets. The entrance of the palace really looks like a castle with two towers and the doorway right in the middle. You have to walk through a series of gates and courtyards. The landscape, the trees, and the gardens, and the courtyards are also really nice at this palace. Oh yeah, that sounds good. The entire palace area is huge. You can definitely spend a couple of hours just walking around the courtyards and the gardens, and then going into the different uh, different rooms and now I am out here. This is the third courtyard I think and there's a nice view overlooking the Bosphorus The 
This is the Golden Pavilion where the Sultan is reported to have broken his fast during the Ramadan period. For our final stop at the palace, I am in the Imperial Harem, which is an area of the palace that was reserved exclusively for women. And this is supposed to be one of the highlights of visiting the palace. What's already amazing just entering is the tile work and the preservation of the tiles. I just spent some time looking around the Imperial Hall. That's one of the most impressive places in the whole palace. That was the perfect way to end this tour of the palace. That was definitely the most impressive part of the whole palace. It's so well preserved and it's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. You just keep walking through the hallways and the rooms and passageways and the tile work is especially just yeah, you just have to admire it. All of this sightseeing has really made me hungry, so next Ying and I are on our way to lunch. For lunch today, we walked over to a restaurant that is famous for serving ja kebab, which is on a horizontal spit. And I think I may have gotten the best seat in the entire restaurant out here in the alley. But I, right, literally right behind me is the spit of meat. He is carving the meat. So I'm getting like meat aromas from behind me. And it smells unbelievable. They are using real fire to cook the meat. And it's just sizzling. You can see the fat and the juices actually like bubbling on the skewer of meat. It is a pretty packed environment here for lunch and I ordered up the special. You can smell the aroma, the fumes of the lamb roasting over that fire or to the side of that fire because it's a horizontal horizontal spit. He just masterfully slices off the meat and making sure that the meat is both juicy but slightly crispy on the edges and then you can see how the meat is both going to be like oily and juicy but kind of crispy at the same time and also serve it with bread and a roasted chili as well as onions and we got a couple of side dishes as well but I'm just I just first have to immediately taste that meat with nothing on it. Get some of that meat. Oh, just look at this. Look at this thing of beauty. Oh yeah. That is stunning. It's so nicely salty. But that really brings out like the oily flavor of the real lamb. And then it's not like a fall apart tender texture, but it's it's very tender to chew. But it does have a little bit of a texture to it. Wow, that's incredible. Now on to the bread. And what I see most people do is you grab, this is a very thin bread. I'm gonna leave it to the half. And what I'll do with the rest of that skewer is I will put all of the rest. I think you can kind of just wrap it up like this and pull off all of that meat. Slide it all out, put this on the side. I'm gonna actually add in that whole chili. And then also gotta add in some onions. A plate of onions, and I think that is sumac sprinkled on top. Onions. Perfect. And then I'm gonna sprinkle on some of this dry chili and then wrap Maybe this I up. Too much time in the, uh, in the toilets. And then when I went out, it was not at the desk, and I called the reception, and they told me that he went out, like, three o'clock in the afternoon, to the hall. So, like, that meat is so hot, crazily hot, flavorful and then I called that it just and he told me provides that flavor for the entire bread, I but I love it with the addition of those onions, and especially that roasted chili. I will stick this onto my next bite. Are we going for the next one? We also got some type of a soup. I think that's like a lentil soup. Um, it's like a, I think it's like a, a, a lentil puree. We also got a mixed salad. There are tomatoes in here and cucumbers and parsley and chilies. And I hate waiting. 
Oh yeah. I need to squeeze on the lemon. Tomatoes in Turkey have been so good for my next roll, and you can order more skewers of meat as well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna double up on the meat. And next skewer. What I love so much about this meat is it is the absolute perfect ratio of fat and meat. So it's soft, but it's not too soft. And then it is just, just packed with flavor. And that saltiness really brings out the flavor of the lamb. It's just, it's, yeah, it's unbelievably good. I like to go heavy on the onions as well. May as well go for all the onions. This is going to be a thick one. Add some of this. And I think this is mostly, I think this is, might be a combination of both tomatoes and red chilies. But it's very fragrant, a little bit spicy, and fantastic. And then I got to sprinkle some dry chili on here as well. And then another half a chili here. This one is pretty big, but this is going to be fantastic. I could not resist the opportunity to order some more meat. I had to have two more skewers. It's just so good. And I'm not going to eat any bread, just pure steak. I'll take that thick piece from the middle there. That meat is spectacular. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. I think I'm in love with the grilled meats of Turkey. That was fabulous. And this is their very famous dessert here. I'm not sure the name of it, but they only serve one dessert. And you can see walnuts in the middle. And it looks like almost little noodles on the outside. And then it looks like a sweet kind of syrupy um, dressing. Mm. Oh, I think those are the vermicelli, which are fried. So they're crispy and then soaked in like a, a very sweet sugary syrup. And then those walnuts are in the middle. It is pretty sweet for me. I do prefer the salty, but that is very good though. Yeah. The tea is a fantastic way to end that meal. Erzurum, yes. Okay. It's kind of from all east. Ah. Erzurum is another city. Okay, okay. So it's so good. It's so good. I am from America, but I live in Thailand. My wife is from, my wife is from Thailand. Oh, okay. Saladi Cup, you know. The best so, chakya about from Istanbul. You are living. You are now sitting. <laughs> we, we ate it already. Bye, bye, Saladi Chai. Wow, I'm the local of Thailand. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, so then they grill like also, okay. Wow. <laughs> well, that is right off the fire. Oh, that is stunning. <laughs> That is amazing. Thank you. That is right off the spit. Erzurum, Erzurum, Jaakeba. Erzurum, Jaakeba. Wow. That literally just melted in my mouth. You have to go. Mm. <laughs> Oh, that was one of the most amazing meals ever. The food was awesome and the people eating there were also amazing. We met one man who sat next to us eating. 
And so the tables are lined up so you inevitably need to sit next to someone because it's always busy. And so the man that sat next to us, he was really friendly. He started chatting. He said that he traveled all the way from the Asian side, somewhere far on the Asian side of Istanbul to come to eat at this restaurant because this is the best, maybe one of the only and definitely the best place in all of Istanbul that serves this type of kebab. Also a special thanks to all of you who recommended that restaurant. That was just a mind-blowing meat experience. The next place we are going today is the Basilica Cistern. The Basilica Cistern is one of the many underground cisterns in Istanbul. And this one that we're gonna visit, it's located right across the street from Hagia Sophia. It's really dark and kind of feels damp and musty down here. This was an ancient cistern that dates back to the Byzantine period and it was commissioned by Emperor Justinian I in the 6th century. Although there are many underground cisterns in Istanbul, this is one of the largest and it is a water, water storage facility. It measures 70 meters by 140 meters. I have read that some people find it spooky scary in here and some people find it kind of romantic. What are you thinking? Is it scary or romantic? Both. Both at the same time? Mm -hmm. It definitely is a little bit spooky. Definitely one of the main attractions at the cistern is the st are the statues of Medusa and there are two of them at the base of the columns and it's not quite sure known how the the Roman Medusa statues got here to the cistern but it's thought that they were brought over from the Roman Empire. I have to wait until I get under one of the lamps to vlog. With all the fish down here you could definitely survive for a while too. We just exited back onto ground level from that dark dungeon. That was pretty cool. So basically this entire ground and this park which is located right here, the cistern is below that. It's the middle of the afternoon. I think that we've decided to take the tram back to our hotel and rest for a little while before dinner. We rested in the hotel for a little while and now back out walking and we're heading over to an area called Besiktas for dinner. And the reason I know Besiktas is because they have a football team and so I, I recognize the name of the neighborhood. We arrived to the restaurant. This place is called Balkan Lokan Tasi. And this is a very popular restaurant in a very busy area of town. And it is cafeteria style. So actually we've had to line up because there are so many people here. And we are getting in line and then we're gonna order whatever looks good. Okay, so you grab a tray down here on the bottom. Oh my goodness, there are so many choices. Chicken in the back? Um, this is the type of meal that is my favorite to eat in Thailand. It's called Khao Gang which means rice and curry. And they have all of the different dishes prepared and you just get rice and you choose the different dish that you want. That's in Thailand. 
but this is the Turkish version of that. You grab a tray and they just, they must have at least two dozen, maybe three dozen dishes available. You just point and choose to the dishes that you want, or if you know the names, you choose them. And then you put them on your tray, you just walk through the line, your tray gets pushed down the line, and then you pay for whatever you eat. And I made a little bit of a mistake because it was so busy and so kind of like rushed to order that I didn't really know what I was ordering. So I just pointed to a bunch of dishes, and so I may have gotten a little bit too much food, but I think that's okay. It looks fantastic, and I'm getting ready to dig in. This is an awesome restaurant. And I'm gonna eat Thai style with my spoon and fork. This one is chickpeas, I believe, garbanzo beans. And I saw most people eating it with this rice, which is rice, which looks like there's some a few small vegetables within the rice. And most people actually got the rice with this on top of it, but I didn't know how to order that, so I just got it on the side. I will put some of this onto the rice. Chili flakes on there. Mm. That's like a, a slightly spicy, tomatoey chickpea stew. That's just like good classic beans and rice. I think this one is yogurt with eggplant. I think that's yogurt. And oh, are there roasted chilies in here too? Mm -hmm. That is a very, very creamy, I think yogurt, um, and very rich. And then there are pieces of roasted eggplant. I think there are, there might be potatoes in here. And maybe some tomatoes as well. And I think this one is another salad, maybe with yogurt and some kind of green vegetable. That tastes like spinach, just flooded in yogurt. And that is nice, that's very cooling. Okay, next dish. And this one looks fantastic. It looks like a piece of cheese on top with some kind of green vegetable and then on the bottom of this like cap of vegetable cheese are pieces of meat and potatoes. Wow, this is like a complete meal dish. At least one that goes with all the dishes. Mm. Okay, this one is awesome. It's like a creamy, oily sauce with nuggets of tender, I think it's beef. And then the, the green vegetable is very soft and tender. And then just a, a cheese cap. But the cheese is not too rich or salty. Mm. I like this. And I think this should be eaten with rice. It's either, maybe it's beef? I'm not, I'm really not sure. Oh, that is awesome. That meat is fall apart tender. And that's like a, a little bit of a tangy, like tomato-y sauce. It kind of tastes similar to the chickpeas, but the, the meat version of it. And then this is another eggplant we got with tomatoes in it. Just creamy roasted eggplant with tart tomatoes. I am pretty stuffed after eating that meal. That was a lot of yogurt. I don't know if I've ever eaten so much yogurt in one meal in my life. But that was some really good food that tastes really like homemade home cooking actually. And this restaurant has just continually, the line has never stopped the entire time I was eating in here. And actually it's gotten longer. People just keep flowing through this restaurant. And this is a quick place to chow down. I would have loved to come to this restaurant when I was in university when I could eat more than I can now. But that was a wonderful meal. Thank you to all of you who recommended this restaurant. I'm gonna end the video for today right now. I think we just gotta walk back to the hotel and I need to walk off this, this meal. Thank you all for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. It has been an amazing full day in Istanbul and it's been sort of a, a tour of some of the main attractions, some delicious food. And I will see you on the next video. Thank you again for watching. Mama, do I lie? Ying, can you see anything? <laughs> Ying is looking right into the piece of wood, but I'm getting a nice view of the Bosphorus. <laughs> do I look like a ghost? Uh, my mom. Okay.